CBGA is often called the mother of all cannabinoids. Uh, what does that mean in biochemical terms? Yeah, so that's a, a one of my favorite actually cannabinoid. Uh, so when we talk about that, you know, like CBGA. So CBGA always and always we call it, uh, you know, like stem cell of all the cannabinoids hmm. or we call it as mother of all cannabinoids in a simple form where, why we call in a scientific world that stem cell because stem cell has a very powerful, um, you know, like a cell that which can be de-differentiated into any kind of cells in the body. Huge potential, right? So when we talk about CBGA, uh, we call mother of all cannabinoids because it is the foundational precursor molecules from which all the other major cannabinoids are synthesized. So CBGA is basically a starting point in the cannabis plant that, you know, like complex biosynthetic pathway and specialized enzyme that convert it into the acidic form of other cannabinoids. So when we talk about the biosynthetic pathway of cannabinoids in the plant, which happen and finally that kind of these cannabinoids actually store in the trichome, the initial synthesis of CBGA. So the process starts with the combination of the two precursor molecules. One is GPP, which is geranyl pyrophosphate. And another one is OA, which is olivetoic acid and the enzyme which is ol uh, olivetolate uh, geranyl transferase which is got catalyzes their condensation to form cbga so there are two molecules gpp and oa which makes actually cbga and then it happen inside the glandular trichome of the cannabis plant as i mentioned the small round balls and then after that from there cbga is routed into various different branches of the biosynthetic pathway by different enzymes, right? And each enzyme directs CBGA to form a specific cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. So what are those specific cannabinoids? Either it is TSCA, either it is CBDA or CBGA. So there are enzymes, one is TSCA synthesis. This enzyme converts CBGA into TSCA, the precursor of TSC. And CBDA synthesis, this enzyme converts CBGA into CBDA, the precursor of CBD. So same thing, CBCA synthesis, that means, you know, CBGA uh, uh, change into CBCA, the precursor of CBC. So that's how the whole process goes. But it is really fascinating to see that how one molecule can de-differentiate into mm. so many different molecules. Absolutely. And... It sounds like it can be used as a therapeutic on its own, right? If it's wonderful, yes, yes. CBGA has a lot of different, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, like potential, therapeutic potential, and you know, like CBGA reduce inflammation, uh, specifically, you know, like in any kind of disease. And you know, like when you, uh, so, so, so there was a some of the paper that which kind of like a claims very well in, in the past research. Um, papers published that, you know, like in acute kidney inflammation, right. CBGA may be more effective than CBD because of its potential ability to block specific ion channels and mm -hmm. suppress inflammatory cytokines and inhibit the pathway that CBD only weakly affects that. So if you compare that, you know, C with mm -hmm. CBD, definitely in those cases that CBGA is more effective. And the reason is because that acute kidney inflammation, that CBGA actually inhibit it ion channels called TRV, uh, TRPM4. So, so the past research has been shown that the inflammation in the acute kidney um, uh, inflammation is caused because of the increase in TRPM7 transient receptor potential uh, melastatin 7 channels in the kidney tubular cells. So overactivity of these channels can lead to cell death and kidney damage. But unlike CBD, CBGA is a very potent and effective inhibitor of that channel, which is TRPM7. And by blocking the TRPM7 activity, CBGA can reduce the cell death and protect the kidney during the initial or acute phase of inflammation. But the other mechanism is that CBGA is also a very big suppression of inflammatory cytokines. So if you think about the acute inflammation, which is basically characterized by increase in various inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, IL-6, and MCP-1, there was a preclinical study in 2023 that which found uh, in a mouse model of acute kidney inflammation. And what they claim is that CBGA significantly suppressed the 
mRNA expression in several inflammatory cytokines uh, compared to CBD, on the other hand, was not very effective. And, and, and another mechanism is that, you know, like CBG is basically inhibit the store operated calcium entry, which is in scientific term we call SOCE. So SOCE is means that it is a store operated calcium entry. It is a mechanism that control the calcium levels and play a role in the activation of pro-inflammatory immune cells. So research suggested that CBGA has been identified as a potential inhibitor of SOCE in T cells and other pro-inflammatory cells. Hmm. And CBD has much weaker effect on SOCE compared to CBGA. So that means the ability to more effectively suppress SOCE is another reason why CBGA has a stronger anti-inflammatory property than an CBD in the early stage of kidney damage. But there are so many different uh, mechanisms are there. And one of the last mechanism I can mention that CBGA AM can also modulate the inflammatory signaling like uh, GNK and STAT pathway, NF-kappa B pathway, which offer another possible explanation that why CBGA is a strong inflammatory action. So it's kind of like amazing that, you know, like how much research has been done with CBGA and, you know, like, uh, and, and, and how much we have uh, known that, you know, like in various different uh, mechanisms, various different pathways, that how it is important and how that it can affect the inflammatory pathways. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. It seems like it has more of a, um, more, more specific applications than like a CBD that seems to be a little bit more broad. Is that Right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's for sure. And also that, you know, like there are papers that which kind of like, you know, like mention that, you know, like uh, CBGA's impact or kind of correlation with TRP channels and uh, one of the important cytokines, which is uh, interleukin-2 production. And, you know, like, and because of these channels and interleukin-2 production are uh, directly correlated with neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory roles. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's why more research has been done in that area. And literature said that, you know, like CBGA uh, has more neuroprotective and inflammatory effect because it is modulating the TRP channels and influencing the immune cell function, which can involve I will, I, uh, inflammatory um, uh, interleukin-2 uh, pathways. So there are a lot of different, you know, like uh, um, uh, research uh, has been done. And they kind of propose various different mechanism. And one is that, you know, like the mechanism to reduce the neuroinflammation by CBGA is that other cannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system are known to modulate the inflammation by acting on the receptors expressed in the microglia cells, which is the nerve cell and the brain immune cells. But activation of CB2 receptor, for example, suppress the microglial activation and release the pro-inflammatory cytokine, which reduce the neuroinflammation. So it can modulate the immune modulation because interleukin-2 uh, is, a, is, is, you know, like uh, uh, if you think about the T-cell growth factor, it can stimulate the glial cell, which is kind of like brain cells in the central nervous system. And it's, it's deregulated IL-2 signaling and contribute to the neuroinflammation. But, but by potentially influencing interleukin-2 related signaling by CBGA, uh, it can help rebalance the immune response within the brain. So it's, it's kind of like a really fascinating that how we are kind of like complementing the different functions and kind of like creating a, a, a nuanced formulations for specific disorders and, mm -hmm. and kind of like giving a value of a, a specific cannabinoids. And so far that, you know, like as we all know, that plant has so many different cannabinoids, more than 200 plus, right? But so far that, you know, like, I don't think that we be in research even more than 10 in a very extensive way because of uh, the regulations, but also because of not having the enough uh, plant material in our hand, uh, in the hand of the scientists. And that's the reason that, you know, like we talk about the hybrid plants, right? That how human genome is already cracked down, cannabis plant genome is already cracked down. So we know that which sequence express TSCV or TSCP or whatever. And then we kind of create the hybrid plant overexpress that specific gene so that we can get the more material to do research as a scientific curiosity. But 
also that every scientific discovery has some sacrifices. So let's say that, you know, like we do TSCP and we have more material and now we know that TSCB is a, uh, is a, is a, is a anti uh, hunger that, you know, like we call a skinny wheat, right? So, but on the other hand that, you know, like, okay, patients are very beneficial with the new hybrid plant, but we play with the genetics, which is against the nature. So that means the plant is weak and plant is not going to survive more than maybe, you know, five and six kind of like uh, uh, propagation. And then after that, this, that formulation doesn't exist. And ultimately either patient is suffering or either that the clinicians has a lot of headache to see that, you know, like, oh, I'm not able to provide the specific formulations which was so good for my patients, but that's the sacrifice we have to do. Yeah, absolutely.